Welcome to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Len Schroeder. And I'm Julio Zamora. And on today's show, it's our Halloween show. It's all about scary things in the garden, like bees. You ever notice how they become more aggressive in the fall? Oh, yes. Then we're going to discuss about the deep freeze and how to protect your veggies. And after that, in honor of Halloween, we're going to talk about pumpkins. Then we're discussing the living dead. (laughs) How do you know if your plant is dead or dormant? That's right. (laughs) Last, we're going to be talking about fire and firewood. Wow. So stay tuned. We'll be right back after the short break. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Bloomers Holiday Preview Party. Save the date, Friday, November 16th. Join us at Bloomers Home and Garden Center for Bloomers Holiday Preview Party. It's the biggest event of the year. You'll have a memorable experience enjoying the festive atmosphere, tasting wine, being entertained by the strolling barbershop quartet, and soaking in all the season has to offer. November 16th, everyone is invited. All the fans of Bloomers in the Garden, all the customers, family and friends of Bloomers Home and Garden Center, celebrate with us and experience the holiday season and the unveiling of Bloomers Christmas Collection. During this event, everything Christmas is on sale. Save 50% off any one item and get 20% off everything else. It's an incredible opportunity to build your own holiday collection or shop for unique gifts for family and friends. Don't miss it. Join us Friday, November 16th at Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County, New Jersey for a Bloomers Holiday Preview Party. Friday, November 16th. For more information about Bloomers Holiday Preview Party, visit bloomers.com. That's bloomers.com. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. <laughs> hey, Len, have you noticed the bees get a little more aggressive in the fall now? I absolutely have. <laughs> Tell you what, it's crazy. Listen to what one of our callers had to say. <laughs> I'm from Sewell, New Jersey. I wanted to know how I could effectively control the bees in the garden without killing the pollinators. Chasing them in the front lawn with the tennis racket just doesn't seem to work anymore. <laughs> Well, uh, tennis racket, not a good idea. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> you know, what he probably had were yellow jackets. Right. Not bees. Not bees. No. Yellow jackets a wasp. Oh. And I was doing some research. You know how you mm-hmm. can tell, like, for instance, honeybees are the thing we want to baby because they're the most important. They're, uh, there's, a, there's a honeybee decline that uh, there's everything from a mite that's being – uh, that's in them that's causing a uh, hive collapse. They're saying there's also – um, uh, different types of insecticides that are causing a problem. But that being said, uh-huh. uh, a wasp has a, it looks like if the bee is wearing a belt, it looks like it's got a really <laughs> cinched in middle right. and it's hinged, that's a wasp. Oh, okay. And it, But if it's like a barrel body where it's a whole body, right. that's a bee. That's a bee. Yep. Totally different. Totally different. Yep. Totally different. Mm-hmm. But yellow jacks are aggressive. They're aggressive, and especially at this time because their food supply is getting diminished. Less less and less. And that's all bees. Um, Flowers are gone. So in the fall, have you ever, like, had a soda, something, like, sugary where all of a sudden there's a bee on top of the can or something trying to eat off of it? Right. Isn't that amazing how that happens? (laughs) I'll tell you what. (laughs) They're they're always looking for something something. that they can feed off of Mm. because at this point, it's all about getting that sugar content. And there's not, like you were saying, Len, there's not much as far as flowering goes. No. We have some asters left, and we have yeah. what? <laughs> I mean, there's moms and there's things, but and like as it's far and few between. They're, uh-huh. they're starting, the flowers are starting to uh, finish, and they're turning into seed. Right. And that's not pollen, yeah. you know, for bees especially. Mm-hmm. But um, it's or, a critical, nec- or nectar. But it's a critical time for them. Yes, it is. Because they need to still be, uh, you know, feeding themselves. Yep. And uh, that's why... Uh, they might be a little aggressive at that, you know, if they see well, you the, around or especially yellow jackets and hornets, right? That they do not necessarily, uh, they are hunters and that they go and they okay. kill prey. 
You know, have you ever seen? Do you know what a cabbage looper is? That's that long, soft-bodied caterpillar. Okay. And have you ever seen that white butterfly that's fluttering in your garden, oh, yes. real pretty, with a couple of dots <laughs> on the that. wings? Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> I hate them, kill them. <laughs> uh, they they're ca- they they will. If you see your cabbage right. or you see your broccoli, cauliflower, any of the cold crops have holes all throughout the leaves. That's what they are. That's it. Wow. Those cute, pretty little butterflies that are white are actually the cabbage looper laying eggs. Oh my! So goodness. we don't like them. We don't like them at all. No. Yeah. But. Yeah. What happens is there are certain wasps that they will lay their eggs on the backs of those caterpillars. Oh, and you okay. see it once in a while where there's a white row okay. of eggs on its back and it swells and it swells. And this is our Halloween show. Oh, so awesome. what happens is that they eat the caterpillar from the inside out, the larva of the wasp. Oh, they do. Wow. Yes. So they're actually our friend. Yes, they are. And but... We don't think that. No, well, some I do. I do. I some people do. don't. Some, most, yeah, most people don't. I think they just see these as wasps as scary enemies. Yes, okay. they're going to bite me. Yeah, they want me. I don't want this. Let's Look at get that. Rid of it. Lunch. That's no. right. Yeah. Wasps are not like that. And one thing about wasps and, and especially yellow jackets, uh-huh. a bee stings you, they die. Right. A uh, yellow jacket can sting you several times. Uh oh. Yeah. Uh oh. Right. Yeah. So especially when there's a lot of them. You're doing the right thing, running away, but not hitting them with the tennis racket. <laughs> yeah, and again, uh, they're not a pollinator like right. a bee would be, like a bumblebee or a honeybee. Mm-hmm. It's a wasp, so you want to keep away from them. Right. And the je- yellow jackets, are they? Mm-hmm. They don't even do that. Also, as far they'll as they'll do like some, a- but they're again they're hunters. They're they're beneficial to our gardens because they're right. eating things like aphids and, right. and other things in the normal season. But right. now they're just getting crazy. They're right. trying to go back to the to the nest right. uh, for the season, and mm-hmm. it just ends up where they're just looking for food anywhere. Right. And that if you're if you're especially if you're near a hive, now mm-hmm. I know for a fact that Art was near a hole in the ground where they were. Right now, that's the problem. If you're cleaning up, all of a sudden you disturb that nest. They think you're going after the queen. They go crazy. And oh, so okay. they're they're all coming after you. So it's now like, do they it's like do you, a gang? Do they usually come back to the same spot again? Or no, they some, do not. Okay, they find a they find a new home. A new home every time. Yep. Okay. So they won't be back next fall in that right. same spot. Oh, okay, that's good to know. So everybody out there, when you're cleaning up and you're picking up leaves and you're doing mm-hmm. just if you see um, exit and entry of, mm-hmm. uh, of of yellow jackets, be careful. You want to make sure that you're right. not getting in there with your hands. Um, there, There is a ground bee mm-hmm. uh, insecticide that's a powder. That's what I would suggest using. Also, we suggest using a water-based hornet and wasp spray right. to control those nests. You don't want to be spraying something that has an oil base because, one, it can harm your siding. Two, yeah. it, don't like that. It, yeah, it, it's just better. Just Look for mm. water base. Water if you base. see anything where it says petroleum on it, That's just right. put it back on the shelf. Mm-hmm. Look, keep looking for that water base. Or again, like like the uh, we have the again. It's in on the studio where right. yeah you can see us on YouTube. It's the spider and ground bee killer by Bonine, and that it just is a little powder that you powder. Would shoot into that put hole. In you want to do it at night mm-hmm. when they're all there. That's right. All right. So that's, that's right. one thing. That's good. That's good to know. So wasps and, and bees, and, uh, or, I take jackets. that back, wasps and yellow jackets right. in the same kind of same category. Kind of, right. Hunters, Hunters. They, they are not gatherers like mm-hmm. bees are and bumblebees. Mm-hmm. And Neat. they are actually, in the regular season, they're controlling the insect population on our plants. Mm-hmm. So this beneficial. time of the year, right. they are beneficial. Mm-hmm. Most of the time, just leave them, alone. leave them alone. But it's always when you're doing yard work and all of a sudden you right. disturb their nest. They think, hey, this is our home. We have to overwinter here. Get out. And we understand that. Yeah. 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 You, know, you want to protect your home. Yeah. Right. They, they are not after you. They do no. not have a vindictive, no. I guess, bone in their body. <laughs> That's right. Do they have bones. Anyway. They have bones. All right. But the next thing are, this is a sad story. What happened? It's the sad story of the bumblebee. Oh, okay. Bumblebees are cool. Yes, I mean, they are. On our plants at Bloomers, we have pollinators that are everywhere. 
<laughs> Bumblebees are one of the best pollinators. Uh-huh. They actually will go to a plant and they will sit on the flower and they'll vibrate <laughs> to, yep, to yep. get it to release its pollen and collect it and take it. Now, why is that good? For one, it gets the flowers pollinated, but it also gets our vegetables pollinated so that all of a sudden we've got a good crop. It's actually a thing where you can call a bumblebee or a beekeeper to get bumblebees to be brought to your field to pollinate your crop. It, it is it is wow, a amazing. it is a service. It is not. It I'm is not service. kidding. It is a service. And you call them up. Yep. Call and them you, up. And you say, Yeah, I want some. Yeah. Bees? yeah yes. And it's and wow. and it's specifically honeybees. Is, they've been doing that for years. Okay. But this is the first time I've heard that they're doing specifically bumblebees because wow. That's they're they're so good at what they do. That is great. That's now, a great source. Now the sad part about mm-hmm. bumblebees, right, is that they all die except for the queen. In the fall, that's amazing. That ha- happens. Wow! Yeah. Have you ever seen a bumblebee in the fall? It look kind of like sluggish and Slug- laying yes. on the ground. Is that what happens? They, they it uh, is the funeral. It's coming at the end of its. Uh, it's the end course. of its life cycle, right? Uh, and it's one of the workers' bees. Mm-hmm. It, it it did all its work, and, and they're, now done, it's, they're done. What they're, they're doing? They're done, and they mm-hmm. serve their purpose okay. well. And and that, is that something? you know, I don't know. It's a it, sad it thing. Is that thing. It's yeah. a sad thing. And then what's left is the queen. That's it. Queen, and she's, 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 and she's doing her, uh, her. She's laying her eggs. Well, right? not yet. Not she yet. has to find a home. Where am I going to overwinter? That's right. Where am I going to overwinter? So what happens is that they have to go and find a place to overwinter, and that might be even like in a flower pot. They ain't go anywhere from an inch to six inches deep. Okay. And they're wow. by themselves. Nobody else by themselves. Mm-hmm. And then they go and they'll have. Um, they'll just stay there, and that they actually. Get a, it's glycerol. It it's it. They get a uh, something in their system that prevents them from freezing. Wow, that's amazing. But they're all alone. It's they used to be the queen of and have a hive where they, you know, that they were. She was okay. taken care of the entire, the entire year. Or she's okay. a, she's a new queen, you know, and that happens. That happens where new queens are by themselves. They, but by themselves. Wow. The, whole, by the themselves. whole winter time, there's nothing. Nope. Wow. Whole the whole winter. And then they have to start by themselves the following year. The following year again. That's wow. right. And that it they are, let's see, how can I explain this? When she finds a site, okay, and it's and the, the bee is mate, mated, okay, so she has the she eggs has within the eggs her. Ready to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I'm quite Almost. ready to go. It takes, you know, all the way until the spring. Okay. It's okay. Process, Keeps yeah. in the spring, right. right. But once she finds a, a site... Um, that after she comes out in the spring, she'll find okay. a site to start a new nest. Um, and that's where she starts laying eggs and that she has to do all this by herself, build the nest herself. Right. Right. It's not like she has a hive that like in honeybees where it's everybody working together. Okay. That bumblebee's by itself. And it has wow. to raise a brand new family all by herself until they're ready to start helping with the hive. With the hive. Pretty wow. amazing. That is amazing. Pretty amazing. True. Now I don't re- I don't recommend this, mm-hmm. but I, I I think you've probably seen me walk by the perennials and there's a there's a bumblebee there and I do it more for the people that are around right. that I'll pet the head of a bumblebee. <laughs> yeah, I I'll do it pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, real fast. But they're not interested in me. Oh no, they are not, not interested. Oh, in me. not a actually, big hand I, like yours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I have I have actually I'm kind of big and yeah, slow and, and clumsy <laughs> like a bumblebee. So yeah, you they, know they we like have you. a lot in common. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but again, bumblebees are pretty amazing, being that they, they are, pretty are they they are kind of alone for quite a time. They are, they are alone for quite a time. But yeah, any so. Have some pity. Have some pity on, on the, the bumblebees. bumblebees. Yes, that's right. That's right. That, is that why they, they we have a uh, bumblebee tuna? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that I don't know. You'll have to explain that. I, I will. I have to figure that out. Right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's the chicken of the sea. Yeah, I, really. I don't know if that has. Any, I'm not sure. Well, but anyway. in any case, um, next we're going to talk about honeybees. honeybees yes. Now honeybees uh, are. We love the honeybees. We do love honeybees. Don't we? Yes, uh, honeybees are always they're usually a darker color, right? And that it's a usually a darker yellow. Are they fuzzy? Are they? They're fuzzy? very fuzzy. Okay. Yeah, and and again, 
Think of it this way. Mm -hmm. did, did you ever see the movie Jurassic Park? Mm, yes, I did. I, okay. That there's a one scene where mm -hmm. the daughter or the girl is afraid of the dinosaur, but it's yes. a Vegiosaurus. 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 Yes. Vegiosaurus. <laughs> Vegiosaurus. Don't be afraid. <laughs> and and that's right. what bees are. Bees right. are vegetarians, Vegetarian. basically, as opposed to wasps. So right. just Dif that'll maybe uh, help you to remember. Mm -hmm. Honeybees' hives are always kept at 50 degrees. Right. Um, they rely on the honey all winter for um, for their sustenance. Wow. And what they do is they create a cluster during the wintertime around wow. that queen to keep her warm. And the worker bees rotate in and out, in and out, in and out to keep her keep her warm. And and how does that work with the uh, with the warmth end of it? They uh, they uh, well, flutter. Yes, they flutter, and the, and that's right. They do this like vibration keep, thing, vibra and that vibration keeps them warm. That's right, isn't that? That's right. So inside like the right heating system, huh? That's it. Wow, that's it. And and inside the hive, it's anywhere between forty six and up to eighty degrees. <sighs> that's pretty hot. Yeah, eighty degrees is like, ooh. Yeah, but the colder the weather, the more compact that thing gets around the queen. Oh, okay. And so again, and, and the worker bees are going in and out. Rotating from close to the queen, farther away, so everybody so gets a chance together. to warm up. Ah, look at that! It's amazing, mm -hmm. amazing, amazing, amazing. It is. You know, it, it's it's been. A, there's a study that was done that has found that honeybees during a, a typical hive right. will consume as much as thirty, 30 pounds, pounds of honey. Wow. Thirty? Pa can you imagine that? Thirty <laughs> pounds? I can't. I don't know. And honey, <laughs> honey is is the one thing that does mm -hmm. not spoil. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. You can keep it on there the rest of your life. Yeah, that's right. Now, I have, honey, I have honey in my home. Do you, Helen? No. You don't? In your home, like in your cabinet? In my cabinet, yes. Oh, well, sure. Yeah. You know, and a little bit of sh I have sugar, but I love my honey, though. Yeah? Yeah, and my, I put it in my uh, coffee. I put it everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I just made honey muffins, by the way. Oh, Thanks, nice. bees. Mm -hmm. You know, it takes uh, two million flowers to create wow. one pound of honey. Whew. That is, that is uh, an incredible number. So listen. <laughs> Can't know your bees. That. Know your bees. Yes. Know your bees and know your wasps. Avoid wasps. Don't go crazy hitting them because then they're just going to think that you're uh, you're going after them. Right. Most of the time, you're gonna. They're not concerned with you at all no. in the springtime. Art. Right, I challenge you. Go up to a bee in the springtime. Make sure it's a bee. Remember, it doesn't have that tight sashed waist. It, right. It's a it's a honey bee or a bumblebee, and I dare you to touch it and put pull your hand away. Right. It doesn't care about you at all. It's That's busy right. gathering all that pollen yes. to make honey. Yes. That's Be it. courageous now. That's it. That's it. They're not scary. <laughs> they're wasps not, are a little scary. scary. But, but we, again, yep. wasps are are not vegiosaurus. Wasps are the ones that are going and looking for food for to food. kill to That's eat. That's right. Not they're collect. Friend, they're our friends, too. They are the hunters. Yeah. Bees are the gatherers. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> All right. Well, if you've got any questions about bees, please call our hotline. Our number, yes. Yeah, our hotline mm -hmm. is 609-685-1880. And if you have a comment or a question, please leave them, and you may get on the show that's next right. week. Yeah, wonderful, isn't All it? All right. We're up to our next segment. We're going to talk about cold weather. It was cold this morning. Yes, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. All right. We'll be right back. Last year's windy, cold winter months were tough on your outdoor plants. Did you know that you can help your plants survive the ravages of winter? Bonide's Wilt Stop is the answer. This all-natural product, once applied onto your trees and shrubs, will put a clear coating on the plant, which protects plants from drying out. It prevents winter burn, salt damage, moisture loss, and also reduces transplant shock. Wilt Stop seals the moisture in and keeps the cold, dry, damaging wind out. Wilt Stop also prevents Christmas trees and wreaths from dropping their needles by sealing in the moisture. Extend the life of your Christmas greens by applying Wilt Stop before you bring them inside or hang them outside. Bonide's Wilt Stop is available in a bonus size 40 ounce ready to use and in pint, quart, and gallon concentrated sizes. Wilt Stop Christmas tree and wreath is available in a pint ready to use for easy application to your live seasonal decorations. Bonide products are family made in America. Will Stop is available at these fine stores. Beanies, Feasterville, PA, Dublin Agway, Dublin, PA, Primex Garden Center, Glenside, PA. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> well, this is our Halloween show. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, weather is freezing this morning. Boy. Holy smokes. <sighs> My goodness. It was cold. So, what do we have to do now that the weather is getting cold? Well, well we need to look at what's going on outside, not only today, but what's happening during the week. And I noticed, Len, that we're in the 40 range right now, upper right. 40s at night. Right. And about 50, so... There's a, there's a difference between frost and freeze, isn't there? The, there is. There can, you, is. can you let us know what the difference is on that, the frost and the freeze? So the air temperature, know. so you have to have a little moisture on the on the foliage of a plant. Right. Or, you know, on your lawn, on your windshield. Mm-hmm. A little moisture has to be there. has to hit 32 degrees. Okay. And then the surface forms ice crystals. Right. So it may not penetrate entirely through like a freeze would. But it certainly lays a, a, a coating layer. of ice. It's like yep. a little layer of ice. Yep. And that yep. affects the way the plants are uh, are, are going to well, grow. Well, it can hurt them. Yes. It can hurt them. I would be cold, too, if I, yep. that happened. To so if the temperature is going to go below mm-hmm. 32, here's, here's some tips that you need to do. First mm-hmm. of all, you need to water your vegetable garden thoroughly. Okay, and this is what we're talking about. We're talking about your garden, your vegetable garden. Vegetable gardens, you right. may have some things like peppers that may be mm-hmm. still promo- uh, wow. producing. It's, the sun is, is diminishing, so that's falling away. But just in case you do, and even on your coal crops, mm-hmm. you may want to do this. Make sure your water real heavy when you know that there's going to be a frost coming in a day or two ahead of time. Okay. And, and then what, once you're done watering it, Right. And you know that it's going to be in a 30 range, and you're going to get that frost, correct? What happens next? We need to – do we cover the plants? And, and, um, no. So, no. First, so, if you've got uh, some mulch, you want to mulch, mulch them. Mulch it up a little yeah, bit. Yep, yep, yep. So you're protecting yeah, the Yeah, before ground. you do any covering, you want to do that, and that, that will also insulate that moisture in the ground, Keeps which also will give off some heat. And then at that point, you put a frost blanket over top, right. and you want to use cloth or paper. You do not want to use plastic. Right. And at all costs, try to avoid it from sitting on the plant. If it sits on the plant, uh-huh. it's going to transfer, especially plastic. We never, ever like to use plastic um, just because that the cold weather will transfer the same temperature right through to the plant. Mm-hmm. So it would be like you never did anything at all. So try to use newspaper, if you only have a few plants, a sheet, Mm -hmm. anything like that. But there are also fiber frost blankets. Go to your local garden center. Mm -hmm. Ask them, do you have a frost blanket for protection? Uh, More than likely they do. And you want to seal the plants underneath that, Mm -hmm. right down to the ground. Right down to the ground, right. Yep. And that way you go and you're protecting them. The radiant Heating from the the uh, soil, the soil is coming up, keeping them warm. The but there's sun. also there's a couple other things you can do because mm-hmm. you have to take it off during the day. You can't leave it on over. It's you too know, hot. Then. Not so much too hot. It 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 gives it a false reading for temperature. So I guess too hot, or sort of. Sort but of. It's, it's not that not, it cooks it. Right. Um, but what you want to do is, is another trick is you can take. Uh, I'm almost like you know what a hot water bottle is. Right. You ever used a hot water bottle? <laughs> yes, I see I them did. on old movies. Mm-hmm. You've used a hot water bottle? Yes. Really? <laughs> All right. <laughs> you have. <laughs> if you take gallons, uh, like milk, old milk jugs, fill them with yeah. with some warm water, put them underneath that sheet. They will keep that area somewhat warm. It's not so much that it's it's the, you know, it eventually will cool off. But if you can trap some of that heat, because the coldest parts of the day, like right. the for, the coldest part mm-hmm. of the day is before the dawn, mm-hmm. same thing. You know, it's between 2 a.m. and 7 a.m. that it's coldest. Right. And that's what you're trying to do. And, exactly and having right. that water there will mm-hmm. actually, in a way, keep that area mm-hmm. somewhat insulated. You can also do things like just take a five-gallon bucket, put it over oh, the really? plant. You <laughs> can do different things like that. Um, one, one idea, right? you take your old holiday lights that you have. All right. String that across, <laughs> and then use that, and use incandescent, not and LEDs. LEDs, yeah. LEDs don't really give yeah, off they any don't give heat. Any, hardly any heat. Yep, yeah. most That's of the coal. Yeah, most of the coal crops, by the way, they're okay. Mm-hmm. They'll probably be fine in the bad. freeze, but if it's going to go down to the twenties, mm-hmm. you may, maybe you should That's, think twice about be it. Tough. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So in the next segment, 
coming up. We're going to talk about pumpkins. Mm -hmm. It's been a rough year for pumpkins. And we'll be right back after this. High Yield Brand Bone Meal contains 10% slow-release natural phosphorus. It helps all plants to develop sturdy root systems and stimulate healthy growth. You'll use it every time you plant bulbs, but it also is an excellent supplement fertilizer for roses, flowers, and vegetable gardens. High Yield Bone Meal is sourced from steamed bone meal, which provides a clean, natural source of phosphorus. High Yield is brought to you by VPG, the Fertilome People, and is available at these great stores. Russell Garden Center, 600 New Road, Churchville, PA. Bloomers in the Garden is an hour-long gardening radio program that airs to over 6 million residents throughout the Delaware Valley. From Allentown to Wilmington, from the Main Line to the Jersey Shore, Bloomers in the Garden can be heard twice each Saturday morning, first at 8 a.m. on 860 WWDB and again at 9 on 610 a.m. ESPN Radio. Each episode of Bloomers in the Garden will be broadcast on Bloomers' Facebook page and available as a podcast on bloomersinthegarden.com. Bloomers in the Garden is adding sponsors. Share your message to our large, diverse group of listeners. Commercials and segment sponsorships are available at incredibly affordable prices. Let Bloomers in the Garden get your message out to one of the largest and most diverse populations in the country. If you're interested in joining us in the garden, please visit bloomersinthegarden.com or email len at bloomers.com. <laughs> Yes, here we are. With the, we're into it now. It's <laughs> the our Halloween time. show. Our Halloween show. Ooh. Here we are, Len. We're going to talk about pumpkins. Isn't this wonderful time? Yeah, yes. it's, it's a wonderful time. But, you know, I think a lot of people are experiencing uh, pumpkin loss right now. A little now. bit of loss, don't we? With all the wet weather that we've had through the growing season, the what's happened is that the pumpkins are filled with what's – you know, farmers call it, they're filled with water, and water. it makes them rot faster. Right. So if your pumpkins had rotted, don't blame it on the place where you got it. It's just a happenstance of right. wet weather. That's the way it's going Drier be. weather, they last a little bit longer, but with this wet weather, it fosters mm -hmm. different types of organisms that begin to rot it pretty mm -hmm. quick. But you can do something about that, and you can preserve it a little longer. Ha what do you What do you do, Hul? You uh, you take your pumpkin and, you, and you're gonna put it in a in a mix of water and bleach. One tablespoon of water. I'm sorry, of bleach to one gallon of water. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your pumpkin and you're gonna put it in uh, in that so like mixture. Take a five gallon bucket, five fill, gallon, it with, fill it with water, measure the water, measure the water, put right? the bleach in. Yes, drop that pumpkin in. You drop your pumpkin in, and uh, you let it soak in. Now. Can I do that? If what if I carved my pumpkin? Can I do it then too? Sure, you can do that. You can uh, you can get a spray bottle and fill it up with the same uh, mixture, and you can spray the whole pumpkin inside and out. Wow, you know that's a great idea because it's mm -hmm. the mold that's in there right. and it's the different pathogens that are starting to decay it right. that that bleach will kill. That's correct. That's a great it's, idea. Yeah, it's beautiful. And uh, now you you can have this uh, pumpkin a little longer. And enjoy it. Yeah. That's a <laughs> great idea. <laughs> now, one thing, if right. you're carving out your pumpkin, mm -hmm. you know, you can use the stuff that you're carving out. Oh, yes, you, you can. Know, <laughs> it's that, that goopy, that goopy yucky, yucky stuff, stuff that you get, scrape out of your pumpkin. Right. There's gold in there. There is, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, what you have to do <laughs> is you have to separate the seeds. And what pumpkin you're going to do is you're going to make roasted pumpkin seeds. Ooh. It's easy to do. You can use a colander. Most of the time mm -hmm. they'll float up to the surface or just clean them off. Clean it off. Then really? you, you go and you lay them out and you dry them off. Dry them off a yeah. little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then and then you get your oven, Ooh, set your oven yeah. to 350. Right. And put them on a baking sheet. And, and then you just roast mm -hmm. them and they'll get to a golden brown for in about 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Let cool. them cool. Mm -hmm. How easy is that? Yeah, it's simple, simple, and they're crunchy. You eat the whole thing. You don't, you know, it's not like uh, sunflower seeds where you got to take the shell off. Right. You eat the entire thing. This is easy. Yep. Yep. And and again, it, you you can make different flavors out of it. Like for instance, there's a, one that I like. You take uh -huh. a couple of tablespoons of butter, melt it, uh -huh. and some brown sugar uh -huh. and a Gourmet, little bit of huh? cinnamon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you just mix it together. That's right. And then you have uh, pumpkin seed. Good roughage. Wow. <laughs> and you and it can it's be good all kind. 
like we were saying, it's all con- you can put all kinds of things on it. Yep. You know, Italian style or yeah. Now, yeah, what's Italian style? Italian style is uh, two two tablespoons of melted butter, one quarter cup of grated Parmesan, and one half a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. Now, you can't beat that, can you? Lance? <laughs> no. Oh my no. goodness, that's a that's a feast. <laughs> now, I don't think the kids come into your door that may like it, but you know, a few <laughs> no, no. days before, oh, you know, it's a goodness. great. It's that's something wonderful. that your family might enjoy. That's right, and it's something that the kids can help with too. Mm-hmm. It's. And not only that, it's a great source of potassium and high in protein, so you can't beat beat that. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So it's a lot better than a Snickers bar. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Especially around your tummy, right? <laughs> That's right. Now, again, we were talking about the bleach. The bleach is a great idea. So it is if, a great idea. So if you're doing that, but just make sure that you're not going to be cooking that for pie oh, yes. or anything else. That you, you, that's only for ornamental only. That's ornamental right. only. Right. Yeah, you yeah, don't want to get that uh, into your uh, system. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And right. we talked about pumpkin pie uh, a couple of weeks ago, and that right. cheese pumpkins are the oh. best pumpkins for pumpkin pie. Right. They're a flatter pumpkin. It's uh, Got a lot of meat in it. Yeah. Then that's the thing Meaty. where, you know, the usual face pumpkins are hollow. Right. They're they don't weighted. yield enough to, to make it worthwhile. Mm-hmm. Plus, the the cheese pumpkins are creamier. It just works Creamy. better. Oh, yes. Yeah. That so if like you're going meal. out and you want to make a pumpkin pie and mm-hmm. you want to use it for decoration for Halloween, but hang on to it for Thanksgiving and make yes. your pie, oh, yeah. there you go. But cheese pumpkins, some kind called milk pumpkins. Milk pumpkin. uh, different, again, different parts of the country. They Say call things, things different things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just like where sugar pumpkins, pumpkins. and and that there's... <laughs> Every pumpkin, there's about 10 names depending on where you're from. <laughs> so. Different area, different. Uh, yeah. Do you, do, you, what's your, do you have a particular type of pumpkin that you like best? N- no. They're all good for me. Yeah, they're all good. <laughs> Those giant prize winner pumpkins. Now, there's another yeah. one. Prize winner. Prize Some winner. areas are called Big Macs. Wow. Why? I don't know. Yeah, no. But those can, you know, 150, 200 pounds. Ooh, my goodness. That's a feast there. <laughs> Not for you, but for everybody yeah. else. <laughs> I tell you what, <laughs> it's something that uh, I know it's 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 something you wow. look and you say, wow, that thing grew in my that's garden. Because, again, you can start those sometime around June. That's when you want to start your that's pumpkins. Right, so yeah. next year, if you're thinking about growing pumpkins, mm-hmm. You're going to be doing it sometime, planting your seed in June. So when the kids are getting out of school, it's a great project for them to do as you know, they're getting you know yes. tired of school and looking for something to do. <laughs> That's, right. That's something to do with And we them. still have a lot of pumpkins left, don't we, Len? You know, we have a few. Well, you know, we don't have, have some of those great big face pumpkins are gone, uh-huh. but we certainly have lots of gourds and Jack B. Littles and baby boos. They're still out there. Baby boos. Here, baby look, boo, look at those that. of you looking on YouTube, here's a baby boo. Yeah, isn't that cute? Yeah, they're white Jack B. Little. Right. White Jack oh, B. Little. Yeah. So everybody have a great time for Halloween and yes. Enjoy toast, the pumpkins. roast your pumpkin roast seeds. Oh. Just go ahead and try it. You'll try it. Your, your family will be surprised. You may have mm-hmm. to coax them into trying it. Right. But something that's fun to do. Yep. Yes. Isn't that that's, wonderful? That's it. All right. Oh, yeah. So the next segment coming up is about dead or dormant. Uh-oh. That's it. So oh, we'll be right too. back. Wow. After. <laughs> Are you tired of the mice moving into your home with you every fall? Would you like to keep them from coming into your home? Do you dislike using mouse killers around your kids and pets? Bonite has the answer. Mouse Magic. Mouse Magic is an all-natural mouse repellent that keeps mice from coming into your home, summer cabins, cars, boats, RVs, farm equipment, garden sheds, and more. Mouse Magic has a pleasant aroma which smells like spearmint and peppermint, but mice hate it. Mouse Magic repels by smell and works with an irritant that drives mice away. Just use one throw pack per average size room and your mouse free for up to two months. Available in a four pack box or a 12 pack economy Ziploc bag. Bonite products are family made in America. Mouse Magic can be found at these fine stores. Magnolia Garden Village, Magnolia, New Jersey. Rosedale Mills, Pennington, New Jersey. Animals and Gardens Unlimited. New Egypt, New Jersey. Oh, here we go. <laughs> is it the living dead? Oh, my eye. Or is it dormant? I think it's dormant. Dormant. I hope so. <laughs> uh, that's what I hope, too. Yes. But, you know, we, this time of the year, it's hard to tell whether that plant that's not looking so good or doesn't have any leaves all of a sudden, right. is it dead or is it dormant? Yes. Now, we're talking about woody plants here, Len. That's right. And... 
They're start, all the leaves are starting to fall. Mm-hmm. They're turning colors. Turning colors, some of them. They're really beautiful at this time of year. And we need to know what's going on. Right. Right. One There's, of the things are that they it kind of sneaks up on you where you're in the yard and all of a sudden, like I have a magnolia in, in my yard. It's a star yeah. magnolia. Yeah. It looks horrible when the leaves are off of it. And sure. I always wonder if it's dead or alive. And I don't really notice it mm-hmm. until the leaves are off of it. And then I look, is time to cut that down or not? And I, and I always have to check every right, year. Right. I think I'm hoping I have to take <laughs> it down. But And it's th- easy to check, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It's not hard. No. no. Get out your pruning Pruners, shears. That's right. Okay. And gently take, take from the tip up. of the area that you think is mm-hmm. dead. You go back about two inches. That's it. That's all you go. Take a clip. Right. And then look inside. Right. Is there, now I'm going to get fancy, right. is the cambium tissue, cambium, is cambium. the tissue between the bark right. and the inside wood. Right. Is that green? And if it's not? If it's not, go back, mm-hmm. go another two inches. Right. Okay. Is that cambium still alive? Is there something going yeah. on or is it dead? And you keep going back a couple inches, couple inches. Right. And then you're going to decide whether you take that whole branch and then you do another section. Now, cambium, now everything happens in that cambium. We talked about grafting on this show before. You have to line up the cambium tissue in order to get a graft to take. That cambium is where, that. now if we go to biology, it's, you know, you zip up the xylem. That's where, that's where the xylem is in that a plant that it's, Plant term turgid means basically it's watered and, it, and it's erect and it's and it's uh, not wilting. Right. Now, if it's turgid, it's those cells that are taking that water through the plant are making it alive and happy. So the xylem is is where the water goes up to the plant. Correct. And that and from the root system that goes through the through this go, yep. system. Yeah. It's amazing how this works. Yeah. And it, right from the root all the way, all up, way up through up, the whole plant. The whole plant. Wow. And so those giant trees that you see, yes, that's what's happening. Wow. You know, the rings that, you know, people say, oh, I cut down a tree and I counted the rings. The trees, that's right. that's know, the cambium. 20 years it? old. That's the cambium wow. rings. That's amazing. Each ring keep growing. gets a little bigger, a little, a little bigger. bigger, a little wow. bigger, and it leaves that little mark. That growth process. Right. Wow. So cambium, you've learned something. Cambium. And, and that, there was another term that uh, you, we had talked yes. about. Yes. Flo- was it phloem? Phloem. Phloem. It, 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 it used to same? say zip up the xylem, send down the phloem, but, okay. but it, that doesn't. Phloem doesn't really apply anymore. They've done studies, okay. so it's not exactly the same thing. So mm-hmm. I don't want to give any false information, but what we're concerned about is a cambium. The cambium, yeah. And that's it this. It has to be green. Yep. Or signs of life. I mean, signs it's, of life. It's going to be, um, I, I guess moist is a good way to say okay. it, because sometimes it may be a little bit on the red side, but mm-hmm. most of the time it's green. Yeah, because the plants are now, they're not dormant this time. They're still well, growing. No. Right. The roots are growing. The roots are growing. The roots oh, okay. are growing, absolutely. The roots are growing. Roots are growing. And, but the actual uh, woody plant stems are... They pretty much are going dormant. Going to dormant, yes. Yep. So they're losing their leaves. leaves. There's not enough the sunlight to keep them actively growing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's that's basically what you're looking for. And the, the plants are like, are, they know what's going on with the... With the uh, Outside. I've never asked, but I'm pretty sure they did. Yeah, they probably know. <laughs> <laughs> so, but again, it's it's that that whole cam everything everything happens in that cambium layer. Yeah, yeah. So what happens? I mean, again, it still may not necessarily be dead though. Right. If there's no cambium showing. But show how them. how do you know for sure when if they are dead? Well, if you dig up the living dead. <laughs> If you go back and you cut back, and mm-hmm. like there are some plants that where the section that we talked about earlier, where the section may be dead and you're not really sure, mm-hmm. and you right. go and you dig it up, and all of a sudden you find the roots are all alive. Right. That plant is just going dormant, and plants can grow from the top, you know, from the root up. up. So you'd have nothing, and then it come up from the roots. Like, for instance, I know the hydrangeas, for instance. Mm-hmm. Hydrangeas can get cut back really hard, and they'll grow they back do. right at the right at the crown at the root. Right. So it may appear that they're completely dead, right. but oh, they're, they're not. not. Right. They're not. So the, and best, the best way to know is would be in 
June sometime? No, no, no. May? If if you, for instance, if you go ahead and take your pruners and you find out that there's nothing, there's no living nothing tissue, there. and you go and you dig up a plant and it's showing white root hairs, and it's, you know it's not from the weed that's next to that's it or it's not right. from some other plant, mm -hmm. that it's actually from that root mass, right. you should put it back into the ground. You know, put it back into the okay. ground, plant it, throw a little bit of fertilizer in it. For most plants, it's going to be holly tone or plant tone. Is, you know, plant tone is more neutral. It's not mm -hmm. acidic like holly tone would be. Mm -hmm. And then just keep it. keep it. See how it's grown. See if it pushes out any growth, mm -hmm. growth from the root. Right. Now, there's a problem with that with roses. Um, oh we're going to, yeah, with roses, what happens with roses is that they're grafted. Japanese maples grafted. grafted. Any plants that are grafted mm -hmm. and that you find that you're cutting down and you're at the root base, oh. you you need to pull them because what happens is that the only thing that's alive is the root that they were grafted onto. Right. Now, have you ever seen? Uh, I know that I have a red bud where right. there's uh, certain varieties of red bud that have red leaves right. and right. some have green leaves. Green leaves yeah. I have one that has both. Oh, you do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what's happened is that the root has sent up a sucker, oh, and okay. now it's mixed in with, with that other. red variety. Oh, the the mm -hmm. actual variety I want right. is now mixed in, and I've got to go cut that back. So anything that's grafted and you don't, you've cut it back down to the graft, dig it out, throw it out, even if it is alive, because the plant is not an ornamental that would be coming back. It would right. be more of a wild plant that. that's <laughs> meant to sustain the grafted section. That's great to know. Yes. Yeah. That's great to know, Len. And, and I always suggest that, like, mm -hmm. we guarantee your plants. Sure. For, for a year. Mm -hmm. year. And say you bought that plant and you're concerned that the warranty is going to be running out. Mm -hmm. Most places will say, will say, listen, can, can you extend my warranty for a couple of months? Right. You know, it's going to, I bought it in April. I'm a little concerned about it. Can you, you know, give me a little bit of an extension? And sure. most places would. Oh yeah, I know. I know. We do. We do, we do yes. it all the time. Mm -hmm. All the time. Right. All the time. With, uh, but again, so if you find out that it's alive, mm -hmm. how long do I wait? I'm not waiting all summer for the thing to grow. When should I? When should I wait till? If if nothing's growing, well, uh, if I plant it back in, if I go and cut it back and I put it in like a hydrangea, I go, mm -hmm. I go and it's sure. like all those. I've got a lot. No cambium showing. I dig it out. I find the roots are alive. Mm -hmm. When should I see something growing? Oh, should, by May, I think would be a yeah. the time when you're starting to. That makes you know, sense. To, uh, come you know, getting out of that dormancy uh, period. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I, that's, that's May, May good June thing. around that time. Yep. Yeah. Again, so going back to the garden center, say, hey, can you extend yeah. this to to May? I'm sure they'd be happy to. Oh, sure, they would. I'm sure they'd be happy mm -hmm. to. But then again, maybe not. Maybe not. Well, we don't know. <laughs> I'm, I we do. You, this way, I know garden center. Most garden centers will. Yes, it will. If you bought it somewhere else, that's a square box. Yes. Mm -hmm. They may not. They may Sorry, not your receipt says. Right. Hey, okay. go to your garden centers this yeah. weekend. There's great deals on yeah. plant material. Mm -hmm. We'll take care of you. <laughs> I tell you, yeah. garden centers, independent garden centers are your family and friends right. in the neighborhood. They live in your neighborhood. The money that's stays correct. there. And we want you to succeed. Yeah, absolutely. We want you to be the green thumb. We right, talked Len? about that. Yes, we did. We talked this is about what we want. There's no such thing as, as a, a brown, brown thumb. thumb. No, there's not. All right. So get out there. Go to your garden center. Get a good deal on a plant that you oh, wouldn't normally yes. buy mm -hmm. because they're out there. Yes. And we'll be right back, we'll be right back. after this segment. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds. We carry a flock of feeders like the Brome Squirrel Proof Feeder, which has a lifetime guarantee. Brome makes fantastic feeders for frustrating squirrels and feeding songbirds. Bloomer's Bird Sanctuary has a vast selection of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. We carry Lyric, Coles, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and our own line called Bloomer's Blend. Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet contains premium black oil sunflower, peanut splits, millet, safflower, and tree nuts. It's sure to attract the most colorful songbirds to your yard. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey. Visit us online at www.bloomers.com. When you come in, ask for Shirley Spurbeck, Bloomer's Wild Bird Specialist. Mention you heard it on Bloomers in the Garden Radio, and we'll give you $10 off a 20-pound bag of Bloomers Blend Songbird Magnet Mix. 
Here we are, lad. <laughs> this is fire. Fire. This is fire. <laughs> Well, uh, we're going to talk about firewood, and we're in that cold season. Yeah, and you know we need to be warm. That's right. That's so, right. Uh, we're going to start off here talking a little bit about the types of wood that we need to look at, and uh, that are out there available for your uh, home. And you know, if you're buying wood from an orchard, mm-hmm. a lot of times you can say, "Okay, I got cherry." Right. Um, some guys will tell you that it's all oak. You know, you have to look. You have to look at what you're uh, getting. That's right. <laughs> but, uh, and you have to ask. Now, one thing, like for instance, at Bloomers, we sell mixed hardwood. Right. It's It basically is a general covering of, of different types of things from anything from, from oak to maple. Um, but softer woods may get mixed in there once in a while, but mostly hardwood. hardwood. Okay. And, and the reason why people use hardwood is they're packed densely and that they burn longer and their coals stay lit longer right so they're throwing off more heat um you know it's it's throwing off more heat per piece of wood where another a softer that wood may would flame up that. make a nice flame mm-hmm. but it doesn't last very doesn't long last there's no all. coals it's like burning a piece of paper Boom, goes quickly mm-hmm. and there's another uh, problem with the softer woods they they release some uh, type of what creosote. They, they can creosote? they can. Okay. University of Georgia did a study because I had always been told that, and we have a, okay. a wood burning stove, okay. and we don't use it all the time. But you know, if we want a little atmosphere or, right. or it's just a little cold Something. in the house, it'll warm it up real mm-hmm. quick. And I was always told, you know, don't want to use any pine in there because it'll no. you know chimney fires. Right. Creosote. Now. The University of Georgia did a study and found that it wasn't so much the pine that was causing the problem. Oh, it was that people were not burning the wood and the fire hot enough to get that smoke out of their chimney. So creosote was building up. Okay. So as it exited the chimney, it would be cooler and it wouldn't be a hot fire. So it wouldn't be hot all the way through the chimney. So instead of throwing all that smoke out, right. it would be building on the walls of the chimney. Oh, and that's what the creosote would be. Right. And it it's a shiny shiny substance shiny. and it and it catches on fire. Chimney so, fires are scary. Oh yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Now the the actual pine wood needs to be treated or No. No. Oh, no. No. It, it, it's it, uh, it's split and seasoned. Split. You okay. know, and as long as it's split and seasoned, it's just You're fine. Yeah, it actually makes a really good way to start your fire because it Cause lights quick. real easy. Right. And that's one problem with oak. Oak, you know, we've had people that say, I, this firewood doesn't light. And it's because right. it's oak and they're just that's trying right. to throw some paper balls in there and, <laughs> and get it lighted. And it doesn't work that way with real dense hard, hardwood. Right. Right. You know, you got to light a fire. So you would probably have a little bit of pine into the – well, that's why we have the, the mix. Of well, wood. I mean, I, I, not intentionally. Yeah. I just think what you do is you sort it out. And that, oh, okay. and that brings up, you know, seasoning. Mm-hmm. Uh, a wood is supposed to be seasoned for a full year, um, whether that's in the round or whether it's split. Now, okay. I'll be honest with you. I'm not sure that everybody is seasoning their fire. I think six year. months mm-hmm. is probably realistic. A little, a little it's probably – you know, maybe in the round is six months and then mm-hmm. split. Um, you can tell, though. You can tell. Because of the darkness of the color? What happens is that it goes think. from, like, a, a white and cream color to, like, a gray Grayish. or a dark yellow as it dries out. So, you know? Okay. That's a, it kind of tells you where it's at. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Also, you, if you grab two pieces of wood and you bang them together, you right. can you can feel it because it feels like like a wet piece. It, it's almost like a, a drumstick where it, it doesn't. You can you can feel a dull sound. Mm-hmm. Where if it's light, you know it, it's a it's a different sound. Um, okay. Try it. You'll 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 know what I mean. <laughs> you'll know what I mean. And just by yeah, weight, by weight, yes, yeah, and then because uh, it's wet. Yep, mm-hmm. yep, and that whole thing. That and wet. dry wood weighs less than the wet wood. Uh, yep, mm-hmm. yep, and it hisses in the fire. It's like, hey, yeah. guess what? We're boiling our wood, not, right. not, not <laughs> lighting it. <laughs> you know, oh, people God. always ask, how should I, where should I put it? Oh. Do not 
put the wood up against the house. Yeah. Okay, don't put your thing. don't put it up against the house. Right. Uh, termites eat firewood. That's right. Now, that's why you got to be careful where you put it. Mm-hmm. You don't want to have it directly on, on the, the ground, ground either. Yeah. Because you want air circulation underneath it. Keep it dry. Yep. Right? If you can help it, do not put it on like – you have to have a layer of metal or something to keep it off of the ground. Um, if you use pallets, you can use pallets. But try to put, um, say, something like uh, sheet metal, like you can buy corrugated steel, something like that to put on oh, it okay. so That's that right. there's a barrier between Get a termite ground. going through the pallet mm-hmm. and then it doesn't get into your wood. Right. So you want to try to keep that keep that away. And if you cover it, you don't want to uh, cover it uh, all the way down to the ground. Either. Right. Cut, you right. can cover the tops. Right. But leave Not the the leave it open on the sides. Circulation going through. Yep. That way it keeps it dry. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's and that also if you bring it in the house, like mm-hmm. I know that I almost brought a half cord into oh my, my garage one time. <laughs> that's, that's <a> lot. <laughs> well, it's not that much. I mean, for for people that burn their wood, I've seen people. Oh, you burn that, a lot. Well, no, no, that's not bit. that much. That's yeah. not see okay. you don't have a fireplace. No, I I mean, <laughs> all of a sudden, you know, if you're if you start doing it, it's like you're doing it every day. Okay. And uh, during the Christmas season, it's all it's almost always on. Oh, okay. But with that, is you only want to bring enough wood in the house that you're going to wow. burn within a week. Okay. No more than no that more. because you may be bringing in termites you don't even realize it. Right. So so listen, try not to bring any more wood in mm-hmm. you that you would it. use in a week or less. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good to know. So, all right. So, here's a, here's a primer, Julio. Go ahead. What is a cord? A cord of a cord, wood. A cord is four feet high, and four feet wide, and eight feet tall. Or, or I'm mean, sorry, four feet wide. Right. Four feet high and eight feet long. Okay. Okay. So that's a stack. That's a stack of. Co- that's a cord. Yeah. Okay. Full cord. And that's end to end impact. Pretty tight. And, and one thing, when you pack your wood, try not to to make it so that it's so tight that there's no air circulation. You want air circulation through your wood so it continues to season, and it also doesn't begin to rot. If air circulation is going through it, it doesn't rot. So okay. when you go to your garden center, you ask for a cord. Right. And that's, that's, this and what, that's you, what you get. This is what you get. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and most of them, they don't bring it in. Some, some places have services where they'll stack it for you. Right. Bloomers doesn't stack wood. Stack. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> but we do deliver. Yes, we do. We do deliver. Yes, we, we, do. we dump it uh-huh. as far as we can back up the truck. Yes, and We measure it nicely. And There you go. Yes. And then there's another, there's another kind of, what is a face cord? Face cord? It's not a cord. No, this is not a cord. This is, uh, it measures four foot high and eight foot long with one piece length. Which is approximately about one third of a cord. Ah, so, it's a so that could be a little. You could get, yeah. Somebody could take advantage. Oh yeah, we got oh. cords. We got face cords. Yes. So face cord is just one piece of wood piece wide. Of wood. Yes. Okay, it's mm-hmm. th- that's as wide as you get. Like no, no more than that. No. Yeah. And then when you go and and you get that wood, you got to make sure that uh, again not not doing it too tight. That's that's the key. Right. That's the key. I don't know. Everybody, go to your garden centers because most of them are selling wood. You're going to pay for a good uh, cord of wood. You're going to pay anywhere from $150 to $250. Uh, Go to somebody who's reputable and get your chimney cleaned. That's right. Oh, yes. Cheapest $200 you'll ever spend because it will let you sleep at night and get your dryer done at the same time. (laughs) We'll be right back after these messages. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has something to do with how it was constructed. Burnton's tire house down. Oh, my goodness. It, it's awful. Terrible. Awful. And it wasn't like the, the chimney was pretty new. Oh, was it? So, wow. everybody, if you're burning wood, you want to make sure, like, again, I have a bird makes a nest in my stupid oh, garden something? every year. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> I, every year. Every year. Every year. Oh, yeah. So what are we going to do next week's show, Hul? Well, have you ever wondered about how those leaves change color? Well, we're going to be talking about that next week. <laughs> All right, good. <laughs> I, You know, how come they go red or green That's or right. whatever, you know, if they're yellow? And then we're going to talk to you about uh, putting your perennials bed to bed for the winter. And we're also going to talk a little bit about 
direct seeding perennials in your garden. How about that, huh? Mm-hmm. And we're also going to talk about roses and their care at, th- at this time of the year. Yeah, my roses look the best in the fall. Oh, don't they? Yeah. And then we're, gonna, we're also going to talk to you about getting a clean start in the spring by using dormant oil on your trees, shrubs, and houseplant. I'd like to thank Brett. Brett, great thank, job. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Brett. <laughs> All right. And we'll see you in the garden. See you in the garden. Bloomers in the Garden is an hour-long gardening radio program that airs to over 6 million residents throughout the Delaware Valley. From Allentown to Wilmington, from the Main Line to the Jersey Shore, Bloomers in the Garden can be heard twice each Saturday morning, first at 8 a.m. on 860 WWDB and again at 9 on 610 a.m. ESPN Radio. Each episode of Bloomers in the Garden will be broadcast on Bloomers' Facebook page and available as a podcast on bloomersinthegarden.com. Bloomers in the Garden is adding sponsors. Share your message to our large, diverse group of listeners. Commercials and segment sponsorships are available at incredibly affordable prices. Let Bloomers in the Garden get your message out to one of the largest and most diverse populations in the country. If you're interested in joining us in the garden, please visit bloomersinthegarden.com or email len at bloomers.com.